threat of pandemic flu may just be the most urgent voice to think differently of our collective health security and global collaboration. There are many voices that urge us in that direction, but this one may be the most urgent. Pandemic flu thre threatens us all jointly, if not equally. It cuts across ages. If you look at the mortality charts from 1918, one of the peaks of mortality is at age 27. It cuts across economic differences. We know that um, in any kind of crisis, the poor and marginalized bear the brunt of suffering, and that's likely to be true with the pandemic flu. But it will threaten all rich and poor The nature of pandemics has changed. Yes, they are pandemics, but they have acquired new characteristics that are perhaps unprecedented. They have acquired a speed uh, that is quite different, and globalization uh, is also about the speed of movement uh, across the planet, and pandemics uh, have that. Um, they are also very surprising in their trajectory. Who would have said that a public health accident in, a, in small towns in China would close down the city of Toronto? We need international collaborations. We need discussion. We need to manage our future plan. We need to uh, discuss the methods and also uh, you know, all the actions depends on information, on the message. When you look at the overall expenditure on protecting human security in the face of threats from pathogens, it is dwarfed by expenditure on protecting us against violence, whether by individuals or organized groups. It's dwarfed by the expenditure on protecting us against natural disasters. We do not spend enough on our collective defense against pathogens that could affect our collective security. One of the things that, that we have learned in this last year of uh, growing preparation is that we have to be ready. And some of the basic elements of readiness are broadly applicable to any number of, of public uh, threats. Business continuity planning across the sectors, uh, using simulations, using tabletop exercises. I would suspect that we could um, think about and spend more energy around how does the private sector engage in I would say a little bit more of the operational and execution side of guidelines. I think the point was made in, in a lesson learned on SARS, uh, the first word was efficiency. Uh, economic entities like the private sector um, have to be efficient or they cease to exist. So I, th I think there is a contribution that we could make as partners in, in the solution and the management of a, of a possible outbreak. The design challenge that we're all working with at the moment is techniques to enable quite fragmented, often very differently motivated systems involving probably tens or twenties of thousands of actors all over the world. If we assume each of us is an actor, there are 10 to 20,000 like us with power who need to be somehow got in line so we work in harmony. And the challenges of making that work are not trivial.